Welcome back to Good Morning Lala on Thought Thursday. We're so honored to have Lynn Marie, who is she is an author, doctor, lawyer, and professional quitter. You've got a book called Quitting by Design uh, podcast, Quit Happens. I mean, I'm ready to quit. Let's just go. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you need no convincing. Uh, don't quit yet, though, Anne. We still need yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, so this begs the question, when was the first time you made a choice to quit strategically in your life? The first major strategic quit was when I was 20. I was a multimedia designer back in St. Louis, where I'm from. And I started to have these inner voices, like, hmm, you're not great at this. You don't love doing it. And I thought, okay, at first I thought maybe it's because I'm not great. Maybe if I take some extra classes, that'll help. And when I went to those extra classes, I was so bored. And I thought, oh, no, 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 this is, if I'm bored in the class, this is not my life's path. Mm -hmm. So I needed to strategically quit. So I didn't just up and quit. I had to go through all the things I thought I might want to transition into and figured out the best way to quit so that, you know, the team I was with wasn't in a lurch. It's like a lot of processes go on to make sure that your quit is strategic. Wow. Mm. It's strate- I love that strategic because a lot of clients will say, I'm ready to, you know, leave my job. I want to do this other company. And they go, should I just quit? And it's like, you have to have a strategy. You've got to like, you know, yes. create the next thing before you leave. The- just like, what do you, how do you strategically quit? Well, and there's always a place. So many people will come to me and they'll be like, I up and quit and it was the best thing I ever did. And there's certainly a place for that too. Mm -hmm. But your chances of success are much greater if you plan. You know, you're not quitting so that you can all of a sudden be out on the streets and down on the hierarchy of needs, you know? Mm -hmm. You're trying to get higher, right? Mm -hmm. So strategic quitting involves making sure you know exactly what part of the thing that you're trying to quit that isn't working for you. Like, do you need to quit your whole job or maybe is it just the commute? You know, if it's the commute is the only thing that bothers you, do you know how much easier it is to go ask your boss, like, can I work from home for a day or two per week than to go find an entire new job so true. Yeah. or an or entire move. new career? Wow. Or, yeah, or yeah, or move. Exactly. Just quit the city you're in. If you're in a city that's, you know, 20 miles away and you can be in a city that's three miles away. That's it's true. just the little strategic quits that you make in there, the little changes, they may make a big difference. So God. true. I'm quitting laundry and I'm quitting sales <laughs> and I'm quitting all this. I, I quit cooking. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely quit cooking because I found what's the stress points in my life? Well, I don't love cooking. And like, I'm very into health and wellness. And I would spend so much time researching ingredients. And should I be ketogenic? Should I be paleo? And I thought, I need to just hand this over to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And like everything changed from my stress level at that point. And my fitness level changed too, because stressing out about cooking wasn't helping me be more fit. (laughs) It was just counterproductive. No, seriously, thank you for making that okay. Because I felt guilty. And I think so many people feel guilty around quitting, but like something like that, I'm like, I, I don't really like it. I don't want to do it. I would like to quit this. I'm gonna, <laughs> I accept that challenge. I love it. But in it, today's world, maybe people quit a little too much. So when is that place? Because I think a lot of people just think, oh, I should just, if it doesn't feel perfect, then it's not complete. Like sometimes you got to do stuff that's just part of learning and growing that's not easy. So where's that line? How do you help your clients like figure out when should you quit versus when do you need to freaking stick this out to learn and grow? The difference there is, is your body telling you or is your mind telling you? We all know the voice in our head is not our best friend, right? Mm. How many times does it tell us negative? It has this negative bias. If it's the one saying like, oh, this, you don't love this. This isn't your comfort zone. Okay, you should quit that. That's, that's where you should probably stick it out. But if your body is telling you, if you've got acid reflux, anxiety, insomnia, because you're in something that's so out of alignment with who you are, that's when I definitely think that you should be quitting for your health. Mm. It's so mm. profound what you're saying, and it uh, speaks directly to the science, the most recent research um, about strengths, and that when people stick to the one or two things they do extraordinarily well, and they focus on exploiting their strengths, that's how they become extraordinary, either as individuals, as families, as organizations, as countries. Um, the most ex- sort of exceptional and most successful individuals, organizations, always focus on their strengths. They don't focus on short up weaknesses their entire lives. Yeah. So it's just profound. I love this. Absolutely. So what would you say, you know, for those people who are contemplating, you know, sort of taking this more strategic quitting approach to their life, but they're not sure exactly what their life is for and about? Because I think part of the challenge, at least for me, was like I didn't know what to quit, what not to quit, because I hadn't clarified what I was optimizing my life for. Yes. So do you help people kind of work through that as well? Absolutely. And one of the, it's so simple yet so profound that the way you find your purpose, your calling, is to just do what you love in your free time for a while. So say you don't love your job, but you know, you can say, okay, my health is not suffering so much that I can't make another month or two work. Just spend your free time figuring out, gosh, what really lights me up? And then somewhere in there, 
you don't have to go find your passion. Your passion will find you. So true. You just so follow true. your intuition. Right. So speaking of the journey, what, tell us a little bit about what's going on with your hand here. I always have henna on. It's I'm I do Indian dancing. And yeah, ever since medical school, and I, I'm not big on jewelry. This is henna, right? And this is a bio tracker. So like the only jewelry that I have <laughs> is all like useful. And I'm very active, so it's kind of the jewelry that never leaves or I love that. bothers me while I'm. <laughs> while I'm so doing what does my it thing. represent for you? For me, this represents. Um, I always say this, and this is kind of funny that I'm going to say this on television, but I have like kind of generic white girl syndrome. Like I'm average height, I'm average, you know, hair color, and all those things. But the little freak flag that everybody has their little like, hey, I I'm a creative. A little thing, right? <laughs> so I just said that. But yeah, that, 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 that's, you know, that's, that's part of it's what it is. It's a conversation like, starter. It's a conversation sure. starter. Uh -huh. And I, you know, like I'm not super artistic in the design world. I'm more of a musician. But this is my little art that I can do to kind of say like, hey, I've got a little, a little something more because I'm a doctor lawyer and those things are generally kind of very straight laced and people might assume that there's yeah. no freak flag anywhere no, there. I love that you find that freak flag and you really embrace your femininity and you dance. That's beautiful. I do. Yes. How yeah. does it make you feel? Oh, that's my flow state. Absolutely. Like you were talking about before. When I'm dancing, I don't know that any, there's anything else going on. That's why I loved at the beginning of the show. You're like, okay, we're going to we're gonna uh, show you guys and then you're going to dance. I'm like, this is already my favorite <laughs> thing I've ever done. <laughs> Great. Huh. Yeah, so the true. Best. So you can quit being the typical program of what it looks like to be a doctor or lawyer and you can take yeah. on what you do want to do. I love that. Absolutely. Even in my own medical career, I work 10 to 12 hours a week because I had the typical 40 hour a week seeing a patient every 15 minute. And I found that that was causing me anxiety, even though I didn't realize at the time, but my heart rate would always get increased. And finally, what did I start doing? I just started taking some like heart slowing down drugs. Mm. Like that's how out of tune I was with what was really going on. And I was like, oh, no, I don't have a heart problem. I have a, I don't, I don't want to see patients every 15 minutes in this, in this so manner true, problem. Right? Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm quitting that and I'm going to find a job that works with what I feel medicine should be like. So I see a patient now every hour in a totally different setting, no call, I'm not prescribing opioids. I've definitely very intentionally set what I don't like about medicine and found a job that has only the parts that I do like. So wow. Cool. What's been the hardest part of your journey as you've taken the strategic quitting approach to your life overall? Has it been other people's expectations about who and what you should do and be? Has it been your own? Has it been something different? Definitely something different because a big part of the book is I talk about other people's expectations and your own. Other people's, like you were talking about that golden cage, mm -hmm. right? In the last segment, other people are gonna think about what you are quitting for about three minutes before they go back to their own Instagram, right? Right? Like you're like, what are they gonna think? And you're like, not much, you know? Like at the end of the day. So, right? They don't, unless they happen to be your spouse or your immediate family, they just don't care. And so that's like a whole, just take out other people's expectations. Right. And your own, that's something that sometimes you have to quit just your own expectations. Like, right. okay, I expected I was gonna be this high powered lawyer or a high powered doctor, mm -hmm. and that isn't fulfilling to me. Gee, who's keeping you in the cage but yourself? Like right. sometimes you have to quit your own but mindset on that. There's such a stigma around quitting, right? I know so many people, you could hear it on a daily basis. I am not a quitter. Yeah. I refuse to quit. I am not a quitter. Absolutely. And that's my entire mission is to destigmatize quitting. Because I, I follow like hashtag quitting on Instagram just to see what other people are saying about it. And all day long, it's just these, you know, winners never quit type thing. And that mm -hmm. keeps so many people stuck. Mm -hmm. Think about how many people would love to quit and love to branch out into something else. Or maybe they're stuck in a relationship or they're stuck in a mindset or a city or whatever it is. And they're like so afraid to quit because that's what they hear. Mm -hmm. So they stay stuck and trapped and they're not living their most fulfilled life. That's not serving society as a whole. That's not serving them. It's so interesting. I have this um, this uh, friend. He's a male supermodel, and I asked him one day. I said, "How did this happen for you?" You know, and I said, "Obviously, you're great looking in all these in all these things." But he's smart. He's an incredible volleyball player. Um, he's all these things. He's an art artist. And I said, "How did you?" And he said, "You know, honestly, Rob, I would try one thing for a little while. If it didn't work out for me quite easily and effortlessly and naturally, I gave it up and quit and I moved on to something else. Or if I didn't enjoy it that much, he said, I kept doing that. And just through a process of elimination, I kind of happened upon this modeling thing, and it just kind of took off. And he said, so I just, it's just been the process of elimination, just sticking to the quitting. Mm -hmm. But so much of it too, he said, has been about redefining what authentic success means to him. Mm, absolutely. Right? And so I think true. that's so key because so many times quitting is synonymous with failing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I quit, I failed right. at this. And I say that quitting is actually a presumptive that keeps you from failing. Think about who has the power in quitting versus failing. If you're doing poorly in a job, your boss can fire you, at which point your boss is essentially saying, you failed at this job. 
But if you're doing poorly on a job, it's probably because that job isn't right for you. Mm -hmm. you know, like I was talking about with multimedia. Then you strategically quit. You didn't have to have somebody tell you you're a failure. You took the power. It's an empowered move to quit when something isn't working for you instead of passively sitting around and waiting to fail. Right. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's like if you have a passion or a mission, like if, say, my mission is teaching truth and teaching universal law, it doesn't matter of like what the, whether it be this show or, you know, different programs or whatever. If I stay on my mission, it just, it unfolds where that highest good is for that mission. So it, I don't think that the getting attached to the actual job or to the situation to whatever, what is the actual driving force be behind for someone? And, someone, and maybe they don't know that, but maybe that they just keep finding their bliss. And it's so important. Oftentimes I found when I'm stressed out, it has nothing to do with what's, what I think it is. We project on, you know, it's like, oh, it's this traffic or it's this, this, or it's that. And usually it's just because I'm not living in alignment with that true purpose. So yeah. how do you help it? Because this is an ongoing thing. And I teach the same thing, like, how do you find your purpose and calling? And you say, like, just go follow your bliss. So there's somebody out there that's watching that says, okay, I, I, I would like to quit everything in my life because they're just not happy. And they haven't found their purpose and calling. How do they find that? Well, when people get to the I want to quit everything situation, I'm always like, OK, stop before you quit anything, because clearly there's one thing that's probably the nidus of all these other discontent, discontented feelings. And it really takes going to a therapist or having a coach to whittle that back because you don't want to quit everything. That's not easy. You know, people up and move to a new city and think everything's going to be different. No, you still come with you. Yeah. And a lot of what's going on is in the, the issues are mindsets that you're stuck in. And so I would just work them backwards and say, like, let's look at your values. Let's look at what does make you happy. What, at the end of the day, brings you an anxious feeling versus a feeling of flow. And then you can kind of identify patterns and identify what mindsets may be holding them back in those areas. And once you get those mindsets out of the way, they may not need to quit everything else. They may be able to make much more strategic quits. Love it. Perfectly oh, said. Really profound. Mm -hmm. Perfectly said. When I think about it now, I was at a point like that where I wanted to quit everything. I literally wanted to quit life. And I look, looking back now, I realized, oh my goodness, it was that, and I never saw it this way, but it was that decision um, to sort of quit everything that I was doing at the time that led me to where I am now, focusing on the things that I love to do the most. And had I not made that decision to sort of quit the miser miserable life that I had, I wouldn't have discovered it the, yeah, so the rest true. of it. So it's profound, it really is. Such important work. Thank you so much for helping and assisting people to quit. Absolutely. It's my <laughs> pleasure. It's my pleasure. Pod, tell everyone where they can find you and all the different platforms you have. Absolutely. My podcast is called Quit Happens. It's on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you can find a podcast. Mm -hmm. And the book is Quitting by Design. You can pick that up on Amazon or my website, which is quittingbydesign.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram at Quitting by Design. And when you want to quit your, somebody else, you can go get a lawyer and, and work with her. <laughs> <laughs> or a doctor. I do. She does it all. <laughs> so good. Thank, Thank you so much. So much. Thank you. We'll be back for having more me. Good morning, Wildland.